Hey guys, welcome to Let's Play Pocket Monsters Green Version. This is going to be a Let's Play of Pokemon, the original version, in Japanese, and we're going to be comparing it to the English version as we go. And we're going to talk about all the different changes in localization and censorship and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, as we're going to go start this game up, let me first of all, first things first, change the text speed to fast. Okay, that's... The same as in the English version, always do that before starting a Pokemon game. And here we get our mandatory introduction to the world of Pocket Monsters, also known as Pokemon. Uh, brought to us by Professor Orchid, also known as Professor Oak in the English version. And interesting fact about this Nidorino right here is that it actually has the cry of a Nidorina. Yeah, nice job there, Game Freak. Uh, so we're gonna be asked our name, I'm just gonna be... Putting in my screen name, uh, although the canon name, well, the canon name in this version for the main character is green and uh, red for the rival, even though in broader Pokemon canon it's the other way around as it was in red. But here um, I'm just gonna put in my username. So, through. B. There we go. And as for, um, as is kind of an unwritten rule for every Let's Player uh, who plays this game to mention, is that not only ask me, does he ask me for my name, but he even asks me for his own grandson's name, which they even uh, kind of paid homage to in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. But uh, yeah, he can't even remember his own grandson's name and uh, since a big part of this LP is going to be me uh, ranting about the English version as well as um, definitely also the English dub of the anime, I thought it would be kind of funny if we named him after the big bad boss of four kids himself. That's right, I remember now, his name is Kai! Uh, Zobi, your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. Let's go into the world of Pokemon. Uh, I have some things to say about this Famicom right here, but uh, that's gonna have to wait until a little bit longer for now. Let me just go to my PC and I'm gonna um, take this uh, healing item. It's called a wound heal in Japanese. Uh, I have some things to say about that translation as well for later. Uh, or for the English version calling it a potion. But uh, one thing about the Japanese red and green is that uh, you can actually use... The, I'm not going to do it for obvious reasons, but I'm going to... You can use this item right off the bat before you even get your first Pokemon. And uh, it does take away the item without actually doing anything. Uh, here, this TV, Four Boys Walking on Railroad Tracks. This is a reference to a real movie called Stand By Me. Um... Which is apparently where my mom is getting her parenting advice from. Yeah, all boys leave home someday, it said so on TV. Is this kind of a representation of uh, how media is... I know I'm reading way too deep into things, but how media is uh, trying to take uh, the parent... Do the parent's job for the parents, uh, as evidenced by a lot of the censorship we'll be encountering in this game. Uh, so yeah, this is Masara Town. Um, called Palatown in the English version. Uh, Masara, the name coming from both Masara, meaning Masara with two S, that is, meaning brand new, as well as Mashiro, meaning pure white. And this is my rival's house, this is her sister. Something interesting about this uh, in the Japanese version is that it mentions that it's a town map of the Kanto region. In the English version, it only says, it only calls it like a Generic town map doesn't mention Kanto by name and I think this is the only place in the game where Kanto is actually mentioned by name until generation 2 which I think led a lot of people to think that uh, The region didn't get a name until generation 2 to differentiate it from Johto, but that's not the case and You know since Kanto is a real uh, region in Japan. I, I could go on a rant about how uh, you know Americanization um, Censorship of Japanese culture jelly filled donuts yada 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 uh, but I'm gonna give this one the benefit of the doubt and just chalk it up to the fact that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of times in like RPGs on Game Boy and other 8-bit systems, you ha have to kind of cut down, uh, shorten the text a bit for translation because 
Well, the Japanese uh, language, because of their writing system, allows for a lot more information to be portrayed uh, with um, fewer characters. So, uh, for translations, you kind of have to cut them down a bit. Um, so I'm just gonna go into Orchid's lab here. Actually, let me talk about, talk to this guy. Technology is incredible! Yeah, this uh, line has been translated in a bunch of different ways throughout the series, but technology is incredible. It seems to be the one that people remember the most being uh, what is in this original, in the original translation of this game. Uh, yeah, Professor Oak's assistant, the other guy says the same thing. I, I'm gonna mostly show off all the, as much of the dialogue as I can, even though you, most of you can't read it, because, uh, well, for those of you who can, if you wanna, like, compare it to the English version, you can do that. Uh, something about these, uh, scrolls in the back there. Um, it says, is it this one? No, this one just uh, says the start button opens the menu. This one, the save button. Um, well, in the Japanese version, it tells you uh, that you have to write a report to save the game. Um, which is kind of the in-universe explanation for what you do, uh, for what the character actually does when you, as the player, hit the save button. In the English version, that's never really established. It just always, uh, it's just always called the save button in, in the in the menu, and that scroll literally just says the save option is on the menu screen. Like, no fucking shit. And uh, here is the man of the lab, Professor Orchid. I'm gonna be mostly referring to characters by their Japanese names, uh, since, you know, that's the version we're playing, and I, I feel uh, changing names for localization in most cases is pretty fucking stupid, but, uh, uh, I have rants for that, uh, for another day. So he's gonna let me pick my first Pokemon, and this is the part of the game in any Pokemon Let's Play where you can kind of tell if a Let's Player you're watching is a complete noob or not, because, yeah, I think there is a noob choice out of the three, but once again, that's gonna be something I'm gonna talk about later. And I'm aware I say that a lot, but, uh, early parts of these games always give you so much information, uh, that you can't really talk about everything. Uh, so we have the choice between Hitokage, the fire Pokemon, Zenigami, the water Pokemon, and Fushigidane, the grass Pokemon, uh, which is what I'm going to be picking. But first of all, I just want to mention, dear French, Italian, and Spanish translators, what could the word shell in the context of a turtle Pokemon possibly be referring to. Durr, seashells, conkle, durr. Yeah, uh, there are three languages with this same exact, very obvious translation error. Yeah, uh, and people wonder why I don't like the localizations. Uh, something interesting, something else that's interesting. In, the, in yellow, there is a trash can right here to prevent you from going, uh, picking your starter from the back, like this. Because they're in yellow, well, there's a cutscene that takes place in front of the table where uh, your rival kind of pushes you away. And that, obviously, that wouldn't work. Or they, it would work, but they would have to program it separately for when you're behind the table. And yeah, they just decided to put a trash can there instead. Taking the easy way out. Are we, Game Freak? Okay. So, we're going to be challenged to our first Pokemon battle here. And this battle is... Really, it's not really as easy as you'd expect for a first battle. In fact, it's actually kind of hard. Uh, it's pretty much a 50-50 chance if you win or lose this uh, because, well, every starter only has one uh, normal type attack move and a stat lowering move. So there's really no room for uh, much of strategy. So uh, yeah, my strategy in quotes is to just spam whatever attacking move I have. Uh, and yeah, as it looks like I'm gonna use this, of course you could use the wound heal you got from the PC, but I don't really recommend doing that because it doesn't matter really if you are if you win or lose this battle. The only real incentive to winning is that you get uh, exactly 69 experience points and grow to level 6. But if you lose like it seems like I'm going to, there's really not that much of a downside. You don't black out. You just don't gain set experience and you get a little bit of different dialogue after the battle here. But, um, 
yeah, smell you later, blah, 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 yada, yada. Uh, as I was about to say, my Fushigidana is back at full health. So we're gonna go out here and... Yeah, uh, I was... I promised to elaborate on some stuff earlier on, and I guess now would be a good time. Uh, the um, potion thing, that uh, the English version translated the wound heals as potions, which I guess I can understand because, uh, well, potions are a common name for healing items in RPGs, but in this case, well, it made sense in Generation 1 when uh, there was no visual representation of items, but... In later games, as well as like the anime and the manga, you can clearly tell they're supposed to be sprays. But uh, yeah, the English version never did update their translation. Uh, and it's just one of those things where... Speak of the devil, this guy's gonna give me one. Uh, it's one of those things where... I see people talking about how it makes no sense that they're called potions, while being completely oblivious to the fact that it's a translation error. Or not really a translation error, because, well... at Translation error means that, well, it, something was misinterpreted by a translator, and that's not really the case here. It's just an, uh, an intentional, you know, change of an item name which turned out to bite them in the ass later. And there is a lot of that in this game. Just ask Mr. Mine. Yeah, and another thing I was going to uh, talk more about is that Famicom. In this game, it... Well, the text calls it a Famicom, but the sprite looks more like a Super Famicom. And in the English version, it actually does say, um, you know, a player plays the SNES uh, and not the NES. So I think what that is, is it's supposed to be a Super Famicom, uh, but... You know, when was the last time you sat down and thought, you know what, I'm gonna go and play my PlayStation 4. You know, usually you just call it the PlayStation. And I think that's just what this is. Uh, although in Fire Red and Leaf Green, they did... Um, in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the sprite is quite clearly a an original Famicom. And they actually in Fire Red and Leaf Green, they actually changed not just the dialogue for the English version, but they changed the sprite. And they changed that to an NES. So, um, I don't think... Uh, well, I don't think that um, it's really supposed to be an uh, a Famicom, but it's supposed to be a Super Famicom. I think that the f the Fire Red and Leaf Green people didn't really get the memo themselves, if you know what I mean. Something interesting about the uh, nurse is that the dialogue... This first um, piece of dialogue is actually different the first time you talk to her rather than uh, any other time. This is something I think a lot of people never picked up on. And I certainly didn't before it was pointed out to me. Uh, yeah, um... So I'm just gonna go around talking to NPCs, uh... So in just a second we're gonna see uh, the reason why uh, we can't get past this town yet. And there's this guy laying flat on the road, piss-ass drunk, won't let me pass. Uh, the English version changes this from him being drunk to uh, that he hasn't had his coffee yet. You expect me to believe that an adult man lays himself down flat on the road in the middle of the city claiming that the entire northern half of town including the gym and including the only exit to the rest of society unless you have surf is his private property because he hasn't had his coffee yet. I'm sorry, how dumb do you think children are? Like, how old were you when you first played this game? Let's be honest here. Did you know uh, that... Did you know that alcohol existed? Ne okay, next question. Did you know that some people get pissed when they don't have their coffee in the morning? Because I certainly didn't. And this censorship is just completely ass backwards. It's just like how in a lot of places you aren't around to even carry around alcohol because, oh no, think of the children, they might see it. Well, so fucking what? They already see it when they go out to eat with their parents or something. Like, creating this mystery of, oh, that's a bad thing and uh, you shouldn't even know that exists. It just makes, it just makes things look cool. Like... 
do you honestly think that's the right thing to do to uh, get pe to get kids off of alcohol? No, the right thing to do is to educate them about what it is, what it does, and not try to pretend it doesn't exist at all. Because the more you do that, the more interesting it makes the concept of alcohol or cigarettes or sex or whatever it is you're censoring. And to make things worse, this censorship apparently made its way into Japan because in Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu and Eevee, this, this old man isn't in the game at all. Ugh. So now I'm picking up the parcel for Professor Orchid, which in the Japanese version, or at least in red and green, is actually an intrinsic part of what is known as the Dokukashira door glitch, which allows you to basically reprogram where uh, warps in... Uh, warps like doors or cave entrances or ladders take you and it, uh, it can be used to go straight into the Hall of Fame before you even uh, get the Pokedex, um, which can be done uh, for speedrunning of course. Uh, it's actually, it's not really its own glitch, it's more of a variant of a larger glitch known as the Select Bug, which was pseudo fixed in version 1.1 of the game compared to 1.0, which is the version we're playing right now, but it can still be done. Uh, basically what it is is that you know how you can switch around moves with the select button or uh, items in the menu with the select button well with the select glitch it allows you to swap items with moves and moves with items and that can be used that can completely fuck up the game and it can be used to create a lot of different effects so now I'm back at Orchid's lab and I'm gonna get uh, the Pokemon Bestiary. It's called the Pokemon Zukan in Japanese. Uh, Pokemon Bestiary is my favorite translation uh, that I've seen. Of, of course, the official English name is the Pokedex. But, uh, you know, Bestiary is kind of... Um, it's kind of a common term for RPGs. How uh, you have, like, a Bestiary of all the different monsters you fight. And uh, that's the translation I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be going with. I think the worst translation I've seen was uh, in some uh, really old uh, fan sub of the final episode of the Advanced Generation anime. They had it as like an illustrated Pokemon electronic guidebook or some really elaborate bullshit like that. So now we're supposed to go, the game wants me to go to Khan's house to get the town map that we were looking at earlier. Except I'm not gonna do that because, well, inventory inventory space in this game is limited, very limited, and the town map. Well, it may be a good idea to pick it pick it up if it's the first time if it's your first time through the game. But if you know the game like the back of your hand, like I do, then there's really not much of a point of wasting a valuable inventory slot on it. And trust me, the limited inventory space in this game is going to get really, really annoying at some point throughout any playthrough of this game. I guarantee that. Of course, that only really applies to Generation 1. If you're playing uh, Fire Red or Leaf Green, then, uh, you know, do what you want. Uh, inventory space isn't really that much of a problem in those games. Um, and of course, from Generation 4 onwards, you have uh, unlimited backspace, so, uh, yeah really only a generation one problem and to an extent i guess generation two and three as well but not really all that much by the way something i should note is that the battle screen has been slightly overhauled for the international version uh the interface is a little bit different um once again this comes back to the fact that uh japanese um the japanese language can you know portray more information and fewer characters so uh in order to make space for longer like move names and stuff like that, uh, it had to be changed a little. So that about does it for this episode, and I'm gonna see you guys. Actually, no, I won't be seeing you. You, but you will be seeing me. No, you won't be seeing me either because I'm not using a face cam. But you will be hearing me in the next episode. See you then. Damn it! I said see you again. <laughs> <laughs>